Okay, so in this lecture, I'm going to talk about this very important concept of maximum likelihood estimates. This is a concept that we will need when we are talking about uh, actual Bayesian analyses in the coming lectures. So it's very important to understand. So what we've seen so far is we've seen examples of discrete and continuous random variables, and we know what we can do with these distributions, right? The kind of questions we can ask of these distributions. Now, today what I want to talk about is the expectation and variance of a random variable. So in the discrete case, the definition of the expectation of a particular random variable, call it y, you can call it with any variable as I mentioned earlier, right? So you have some random variable y with some probability mass function f of y, right? And so you could compute the expectation of y by using this formula, which is basically multiplying every possible outcome y with its probability and summing up those values, right? So for example, if you toss a fair coin once, that's your Bernoulli situation, right? So the possible outcomes are tails or heads, and let's say the probability of each outcome is 0.5, right? So in that case, the expectation of that particular random variable is going to be this calculation here, which is zero multiplied with its probability and one multiplied with its probability, which gives you 0.5. So that's the expectation here, right? And the variance is computed with this formula. I won't say much about this, except that you're still computing expectations, you know, of some function of this random variable. This is a discussion that kind of is not relevant for us, but if you're interested, I'll, I'll point you to some textbooks that you can look at, okay? So, the expectation, what does it mean, right? So the expectation has this interpretation that if you were to repeatedly do the experiment with larger and larger and larger sample sizes, we would start getting the expected value of that random variable. In this case, it's 5, 0.5, right? In the, in the case of the Bernoulli example I gave you, theta has a value of 0.5. As we increase the sample size and repeatedly run the experiment will get closer and closer to 0.5 in the in this limiting case right another way to think about the expectation is to th think of it as follows you, it is the weighted mean of the possible outcomes weighted by the probabilities right that's what i just did earlier i'm literally taking the weighted mean weighted by the probabilities of particular outcomes if theta had been 0.1 you know, the probability of success had been 0.1, then this would be multiplied with 0.1 and not 0.5, and this zero would be multiplied with 0.9, right? So it's a weighted sum in that sense. Okay, so that's the expectation, and just as information, it's good to know this, although we won't really need this information in this course, it's still good to know that you can compute the expectation of a particular random variable using this formula, n times theta, n is the sample size in this case, right? And the variance is computed with this formula here. So if I have particular data, you know, with k successes out of n trials, I could get an estimate of theta, which I'm calling theta hat. So whenever I talk about the estimate of a parameter from real data, I'm going to put a hat on top of it. So I'm going to call it theta hat, right? And so similarly, the variance of that, of some particular data, vector of data that I have, some y, I could compute by, you know, calculating this value once I've got an estimate of theta, right? I know what n is because I decide on that as an experimenter, right? Similarly, in the normal distribution, the expectation of y has the same formula as in the discrete case, except that this has a continuous, you know, expression in terms of the integral, right? Integral is just summation. So we're just summing up this weighted sum here, but we are multiplying each possible outcome with a probability density now, right? Not a probability, but a probability density, right? So that's the only difference here. And because this is continuous, we have to do this integration because we have an infinity of values, right? That's the beauty of calculus. That's what it gives us, the ability to do this kind of summation in continuous space, right? And so this expectation in a normal distribution is the parameter mu, right? And the variance will be sigma squared, right? So we can calculate the variance um, by you, the usual formula, you know, that you have for sigma squared, you can use that and you get those estimates. So these you must have seen in, in standard introductory courses, you know, in statistics. So these are what uh, the important ideas that we're going to work with in, um, in future lectures, right? The expectation and the variance and so on, right? Now, I should mention that 
all these, I just stated that the expectation is this and the, and the variance is that for the normal and the binomial, but all these results can be easily derived analytically, right? Just on paper, you can quickly derive these. And I've done that in my other lecture notes, which are online. If, you, if you're interested in the proofs, and they're really simple proofs, they just require a little bit of uh, calculus in some cases, in the, in the continuous case, but it's not very complicated. But you can find the, the an, uh, proofs here, and also you'll find them in every statistics textbook, you know, mathematical statistics book. Okay, so <clears throat> now what I want to get at here is that if I have some observed data, I can compute the estimate of theta, that is theta hat. Right? I can work that out. In the binomial case, it would be k, that is the number of successes divided by the total number of trials, right? Now, the quantity theta hat that I compute here is the observed proportion of successes and it's called the maximum likelihood estimate of the true unknown parameter theta. We don't know what theta is, we will never know what theta is, but we can estimate it from the data. So once we have estimated theta in this way, we can, of course, calculate the variance as well using the formula I showed you because that involves this theta as well, right? And then these estimates, the expectation and the variance are then used for statistical inference, hypothesis testing, all that, all that good stuff that we've learned about in frequent statistics, right? So the estimate is called the maximum likelihood estimate, but what does that actually mean? Okay, so I'm gonna explain that now, right? So, <clears throat> we have to understand what a likelihood function is in order to understand maximum likelihood estimation. So in the binomial example, we've got some uh, probability mass function, which I hope you remember, right? And that probability mass function contains three terms, the number of successes, which you can call k or x or whatever, and the total number of trials and theta, the parameter theta, which determines the uh, probability of success, right? So if you look at that probability mass function as a function of theta, fixing k and n, right? You've done the experiment. Let's say you get seven successes out of 10 trials. k and n are now fixed quantities. They're no longer random data, right? So theta, however, is, could be treated as a variable, and then the same probability mass function can now be seen as a function of theta, and we call that the likelihood function, okay? And it's often written as this curly L theta, or sometimes it's written like this, right? So there are different ways to write this, but basically you can just think of the likelihood function as the probability mass function or the probability density function as a function of the parameters rather than a function of the data as we saw earlier, right? So that's the shift in thinking that leads to the likelihood function. So. Suppose that we were to run 10 trials and we get seven successes, right? So in that case, the likelihood function would look like this. N and K are now fixed. The only thing that's varying is theta. Now I can plot this function. Theta can only have values between zero and one. It's a probability, right? So the x-axis, the support, right? So to say of this uh, variable will be between zero and one, right? So if I plot this function now as a function of theta, this is theta now, all the possible values of theta, what you will notice for this particular data that I have, the maximum point of this likelihood function is at 0.7. What is 0 0.7? 0 0.7 was the estimate we got of theta from the expectation formula, right? Seven out of 10, right? 0.7 is the maximum point. So that's why the k over 10, you know, the, the estimate of theta that we get from a particular data set is going to be the maximum likelihood estimate. And what that means is that it's going to mark, this 0.7 marks the maximum point in this likelihood function, which is a function of theta, right? So that's the amazing thing here, that a single data set is gonna give me an estimate, the most likely estimate of the parameter, right? Given the data that I have. So that's what a maximum likelihood estimate is, right? So, in the binomial, right, it's k over n, as I just showed you, and in the normal distribution, it would be, you can get the maximum likelihood estimates of mu and sigma, and uh, it would have the same interpretation, uh, except that we're talking about a different distribution here, okay? So I hope that this intuitive introduction to the idea of maximum likelihood estimates 
is uh, good enough for our purposes now. But if you want to read more about this, and it's not a lot, you know, this is just a short topic uh, that you will find in most textbooks. You will uh, uh, you will see it in textbooks like Cairns textbook, which is available for free online. You should read this. Uh, it'd be an interesting introduction to maximum likelihood estimation, and they give a more formal introduction there. Of course, I'm giving a very intuitive picture about MLEs, and of course, there's a lot of detail as always. You know, in every topic, there's tons of details that you can get into. But the important issue I have explained, what we will need for this course, I have explained now. Right? One important thing I want you to understand is that in a particular experiment, like you run. You know, trial with sample size 10, you get seven successes, you get seven out of 10 as your estimate of theta. It is a maximum likelihood estimate, but it's not necessarily the true value of that parameter, right? So if you have small sample sizes, what will happen is, here I'm running an experiment with increasing sample sizes. The true value of the parameter is 0.7. But for small sample sizes, you will notice that in particular experiments, so each dot is an experiment with increasing sample size, what you'll notice is that with small sample sizes, the maximum likelihood estimate is going to fluctuate around the true value. It's going to bounce around, right? So statistici statisticians call this a vibration effect, the vibration of the parameter, right, in small sample sizes. It's only when you get to larger sample sizes that you st consistently start getting maximum likelihood estimates from the data that represent the true value. The practical implication of this figure is that, is that if you have a small sample size and you get a sample mean, you know, like k out of 10, uh, k out of n, in the particular example I showed you with the binomial, there is no guarantee that this is reflecting the true value of the parameter. So uh, to give you a really concrete example, I toss a coin 10 times. Normally, I would assume that this coin is a fair coin, right? I could easily get 10, 10 tails, one after another, and the coin could still be fair. That means the true probability could still be 0.5. But you were in this space here of a small sample, right? And you got this vibration of effects. You can end up with a wild mean that completely does not represent the true value of the parameter, right? So just the fact that it's a maximum likelihood estimate does not entail that you're going to get the true value each time. It's a super important point to understand, OK? OK, so in summary, we can compute the expectation and the variance for discrete or continuous random variable. I showed you some examples, right? And um, these estimates, right, can be shown analytically to be maximum likelihood estimates in the sense that I showed you. And what we're going to do next is, uh, when we start doing Bayesian modeling, is that we're going to be using these maximum likelihood estimates to, uh, to understand what the Bayesian analysis is going to give us, right? So these, these will play a very important role in the an analytical examples that I will give you when we start doing Bayesian modeling, right? The next lecture is now going to talk about another example of a random variable, the bivariate case and more generally the multivariate case, where you don't have just one random variable, but you have multiple random variables all working at the same time to create a bivariate or a multivariate distribution. So that's an example I will discuss in the next lecture.